Marta, it's always a pleasure talking to you, mate. And I don't th- I think this is the first time in the whole time that we've known each other where I'm sitting here mm. thinking, hang on a second, we're, we're hoping to beat Argentina, yet you're riding on, on this high of after beating the world champions. What the hell is that? Yeah, welcome to being a Wallaby supporter. We were always on edge. We were magnificent last week, and you guys were hopeless. I hope it's been an awful week over there in New Zealand for you. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has, mate. And, and look, yeah. m- much, much navel gazing. And look, we and we, you know, chose exactly the same team. The run on fifteen to uh, yesterday was selected, and you, oh. I'm sure you could have heard the collective what? groan from Australia, mate. It was just like, oh, you're kidding me, really. We've done, it. we've done the same thing, but we won last weekend in a magnificent victory, and we maintained the first time Dave Rennie's ever had the same team um, two weeks in a row. So we're making our way. We look like we're looking good for the World Cup all of a sudden. It's incredible. Well, it's, this is a this is a, boy, a team a buoyant spirit. Yeah, look, and and this is a team. Remember last week against South Africa, that you you were what well, you're, you're choosing the third string Wallaby side. You've got so many injuries. Your injuries. You've got thirty players out, and you still dealt to them. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are the masters at it, or uh, since 2007 World Cup, of getting your team sorted out, working it out, you know, getting your depth built up, and then the year before the World Cup, you've got to build combinations. I think, uh, you know, I've made big comments before, I think we're now getting ourselves sorted. And remember, we've still got Samu Karevi to come back, we've got Michael Hooper, and we probably don't need Quade Cooper anymore. The young bloke, Lola Thea, went all right last week. So I don't know what you're going to do. I don't... I don't think I can help you at all, but um, good luck. Good luck. luck. Can you imagine what it must be like in this country here? We're we're hoping. I'm going to say that out loud to you. The All Blacks are hoping we beat Argentina at home. Hoping. Mm. I've seen it all, mate. This is what we live through every week. And finally, it's happened. No, in reality, I hope you guys go well. Have you spoken to Checker at all, Michael Checker? Do you know know what his latest story is? Do you know? That not only coaching the Argentinian team, he's also the coach of the Lebanon Rugby League team at the World Cup this year. Wow. And there's a potential, if, if Lebanon, I think, make the quarterfinals, which is possible, um, he'll be playing Lebanon quarterfinal in the Rugby League in England on the Friday, and then on the Sunday, his Argentinian rugby team will be playing England. I don't know how he's going to pull it off, but uh, good luck to him. He must be a master coach. Yeah, this is Marto with us, Triple M Breakfast Show out of Brisbane. They own the market. They do a men's show talking about men's things. Checker was brilliant at the post-match presser last week, mate. He just had to throw in the name of Razor Roberts and had to throw in the Crusaders, didn't he? He just had to do it, didn't he? He loves a barb more than anyone else. And he knows, he, oh, well, you guys are pretty mean to him over the years. Yep. So he's finally having a giggle in his own time. He, uh, I don't know. Well, his problem has always been, and I, hope he, oh, I don't care if he's listening to this, but his problem's always been he's a great coach for the first two or three se- two seasons and then the message wears off. That happens with a lot of coaches. So he's doing the right thing. He, he'll keep on bouncing around. Maybe you need him as your coach. No, it's not Maybe such, that's a, what you're it's such a stupid idea. Aren't it? It's such a stupid... Well, I mean, between him and Eddie Jones, mate, come here and say that, mate. I mean, they've got to be the two most colourful characters, don't they, in world rugby coaching? And they and they come from the same area. They played for the same club. And they're both... You, you know their background. They're both disappointed because they never made the Wallabies. So they, they, they've grabbed... They've harnessed the power of that disappointment where anyone thought thought they weren't quite good enough and have turned that hatred into years of good coaching. So there's any coaches out there who got dropped and hate everybody, go and become a coach. Apparently you become good because of that hatred. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? The Broncos. The Broncos who? Well, that's what it is these days, isn't it? Because you're not making the eight, mate, are you? You walked into that. (laughs) Now, I know you don't follow the AFL, but last night okay. was quite an incredible... We're all on AFL now. We don't care about rugby league now in Brisbane. <laughs> so, could not give a stuff. Broncos who? You're so right, mate. Oh, God, they're a rabble at the moment. Like, uh, there you go. The Broncos example. And I know you've got your Warriors problems and everything else. The Broncos, probably too many young guys, and by the end of the season, they just worn out, they've been bashed around, and they've just they've gone from fourth to ninth yeah. in the space of four or five weeks. No. So. Yeah, it's not a, not a, not something we're proud of. We're just mainly all about AFL and uh, the Wallabies. At the okay, moment. so what's the AFL thing? What your, your Brisbane Lions doing all right? Are they? Yeah, last night. Oh God, yeah, this big news. Last night they uh, won the won the oh, what was it? The elimination final. So they're through to the second round of the semis. So yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, mate, you, you, if you don't understand, the southern half of Australia is all AFL. 
but there's a lot of people from down there because it's cold. They come and move up to Brisbane. So they normally, they know that people, oh, do you want to talk AFL? They don't, they don't try not to talk it because you don't fit in all that much up here in Brisbane if you do. But all of a sudden, they're the kingpins in all their workplaces and job sites. Is anyone who likes AFL? Oh, yeah, right. Everyone's on the bandwagon, you know, with those sort of people. The Big Bash draft, um, it had a couple of New Zealand names, and this story erupted this week because one of our Black Caps players actually went and got a job doing that, didn't tell his employers, and then all of a sudden it became public. Is that Trent Bowles? No, this was Colin de Gronholm, who just, you know, like, hang on a second, you've, but you've already got a girlfriend, you can't get another girlfriend, mate. Well, that's what happened. What? Is he in the big bash, is he? Well, he is now. That's because he got drafted. He got dra- But uh, my point is, you see, you don't even know this because does anyone care about the big no. bash? Here was a competition that was brilliant and then the market has got hold of it and they've just stuffed it, haven't they? It's just terrible sugary cereal and it's for 12-year-old boys. We know that. And the other thing is, did you know that Australia have beaten the Zimb- Zimbabwe in two one-day internationals this week as well up in Townsville? I, I, no, I, I started I started watching one, mate, and I flicked over and I looked at it and I just thought, that is the most pointless sport I've seen all year. What the hell is that about? Yeah, it's about trying to squeeze more cricket in, but get out of the way, bugger off cricket. This is football season. When it's over, we'll, we'll give you a yell and you can crank up again. But they're trying to... Trying to steal a march on it. Yeah, very rude of cricket. They should know they stay in your lane, cricket. You're a summer sport. The Serena Circus rolls on at the US Open. If you watch ESPN like I do, mate, it's just a sickener at the moment. It's just every single story is about what I work. Just a, a giant of humanity that the woman is. Look, I appreciate her tennis mm-hmm. talents, mate, but I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm the only Grinch in the, in, the, in, the, in the deck of cards at the oh, moment. Oh, God. I'm glad your tone of voice matches what I think too. I don't think she's she's been mean and nasty to so many people over the years, and now she's held up as a uh, Mother Teresa, as the doyen. Yeah, yeah, for exactly. No, I've never liked. Yeah, you know, the grunting used to get me, especially when people yeah you know, players. You can't say the word cheat, but Serena, I don't care. But no. New York seems to love her. So I do. That's all important. Yeah. Hey, I got to finish on this, mate. Spring yeah. is here, of course, when a boy and a girl mantis both get what they're praying for. So I wish you luck on that on the island this weekend. I do presume you're going. No, I'm not going. I've got something I have to attend to, an official or function. Okay. Um, oh, spring over here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's no different to winter, really. It's just 24 degrees every day. Is that what? what, what does, does the temperature get into double digits over there? I'll stop it, Come mate. on over, everyone. It's yeah. really nice here. Come on over. Now, you don't have to wear masks either, New Zealand. The rest of the world's actually gone past that. Uh, we had Phil Kearns on the program, the old mate, of course, uh, earlier in the week. And oh, he, how is he? He was talking about your mate, Bob Dwyer, okay? And I know you're not great mates with Bobby D, but he said that Bob Dwyer's yeah. coach... Coaching philosophy was get ball, hold ball, advance ball. He said Phil Rickens is just way too much, way too much complication in the coaching department these days. Uh, all right. So, so Bob Dwyer played. He played club footy. He never played New South Wales or Australia. And then next thing you know, he became our coach. Um, Bobby was a Bob was a flanker, a blindside flanker in his day. Okay, so he was qualified to coach the forwards, and that was fine. But they used to go. They virtually used to say to him, "This is the respect." Um, that coaches were held in, um, they used to say, oh, leave us alone, Bob. So then he'd trot over to the backs while we were training and everyone, and he'd start trying to tell us how to do things. we go, oh, hold on, woo, 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 woo. Get back. Everyone would just go, now the backs would go, bugger off, Bob. You're ruining everything. And he'd go back over to the forward. So he was sort of, it was simple, mate. You didn't get overcoached in those days. It was just run hard. And if a bloke's got the ball, hit him really hard. And that's with it. Maybe that's why we won a few games occasionally.